Hey Alec here, so I'm a successful freelance developer, I've been freelancing since 2018 and in this video I decided to make a specific video for web developers who want to freelance, I'm going to show you how to find work as a web developer on Upwork. Before we get started, if you don't have an Upwork profile yet, uh, I'm not going to show you how to do that in this video, but I have a video that I made recently uh, that you can check in the comments. It's going to show you how to get started and how to create your profile. In this video specifically, I'm going to talk about how to optimize your profile, make it better, make it attractive so clients want to hire you. And I'm going to talk about how to actually get jobs once your profile is made. So if you want to know how to build your profile, uh, if you want to know how to get accepted on the platform, that sort of thing, you should go check out that video in the description. So. Let's get started. So how to optimize your profile as a web developer to get more jobs. So the first thing we're going to look at is the first thing that clients see, which is your profile picture. Making a good profile picture is essential. However, it's pretty easy to do. There are, you know, being be building something like a Tinder here that you can see here, it looks like a professional photo taken outside. Not everybody can do this. Not everybody can make a good looking photo like this, especially like here in, it's in Paris. It's like you maybe don't have that sort of background, but there are some successful developers who have very simple pictures that you can easily replicate. So here, what you have this search, I'm only looking at web developers who have an hourly rate between $50 and $100 an hour. An hour. And also, um, I have only taken, um, I have filtered this out. So we only see freelancers who have earned at least $10,000 on the platform. So they're at least successful and that they have made in the last six months, at least uh, they've charged at least $100. So we know they're, they're, they're active. So um, every profile that you see here is a profile of a successful freelancer who is active on the platform. So what you're going to see is that some people like a Tinder have uh, profile pictures that look pretty hard to replicate. However, other people like Jonathan here uh, are simpler to replicate and other people like Daywin are really, really simple to replicate. If we look at Daywin's, Day, Daywin's profiles here, uh, what you're going to notice is just a picture he took in front of a white wall. The only thing is a lot of people will try to pay, take a picture like this and it will look like garbage. And the reason it's going to look like garbage is because you're only going to use the lights from your ceiling and it's going to create weird shadows on your face and it's going to look very unprofessional. However, as you see, Dave, David's uh, profile here, the shadow is at the back of his face and his face is very well lit. So how do you do that? How do you make sure you have good uh, lighting? All you got to do is go on Amazon and buy one of those ring lights that TikTok you people use. There's some that cost like $40. That's what I'm using right now for my lighting. You can see the halos of that on my uh, computer monitor here. But uh, yeah, very easy to use. Uh, in case the tripod is not long enough for you, you can just put that on a box or a counter. And it's very easy. You could just take a picture of yourself like uh, smiling with uh, a natural pose and that is enough for David and many other uh, successful web developers on Upwork. You don't have to take a really complicated picture to be successful on Upwork. Just doing something simple like this can work. So next uh, you have your profile. Well, I'm going to talk mainly talk mainly about elements in your profile overview because this is definitely the most important parts of your profile. If you don't know what a profile overview is, it's basically before someone clicks on your profile, this is what they see. This is the overview. Once they click on your profile, they see everything else. Everything on your profile is important to a certain degree. However, uh, it's not as important as what's in your overview because if people don't click and on your overview and don't like what they see there, they're not going to see the rest of your profile. So in some sense, everything in your overview is what matters the most. So the next thing in your overview that matters uh, is possibly the thing that matters the most is your uh, job title. So one of the reasons it, it really matters is that when you apply to jobs, it's one of the things that clients decide to click on your profile. Uh, based on the most, right? So what you have to do is that you want to not just write, for example, a uh, web developer, you want to, you know, Jonathan gets away with it. He, um, it, it's not like a big problem. However, in my experience, it's much better to do th something like a Tinder does here. Basically, he has his basic job title and then he puts a list of other specializations. I'm sorry about this pop up, really, really annoying. Uh, like Elementor Pro, Full Stack Developer, uh, and other 
uh, keywords. And what what's going to happen is that if you get a client, you apply to a job and a client needs, for example, a JavaScript expert, and you say like a uh, web developer slash JavaScript expert uh, slash DOM manipulation, someone who needs like DOM manipulation with JavaScript is going to find your profile very appealing and it, it increases the clicks you're going to get. So writing your specializations or technologies you use after your job title is great. So what you could do, for example, is just like web developer uh, slash uh, maybe you're using bootstrap maybe wordpress maybe like you put a list of different technologies that's a very simple thing people can do and it works really well there's many of these top freelancers who are doing that and that's what i actually recommend doing because there's a lot of other things you can do but this is the simplest thing you can do that's proven to work so web developer slash bunch of technologies you're using so next you have your um your um, text here, your profile bio, on your profile overview, the two first line appears. One of the things you're gonna notice is here, a Tinder, uh, uh, well, I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna show you another one as an example. So uh, where is it? Uh, yeah, Daniel here. Daniel, if you look at, at his full profile, you can see that the first lines of his profile are actually just these bullet points that are very short. However, what uh, Upwork does when they create your profile overview is that they remove the paragraph breaks, but, uh, the line breaks between your different elements and paragraphs so that uh, everything is kind of pushed together in one big block of text. So don't worry about putting too many uh, line breaks or paragraph breaks, it's actually great. Uh, it's, it's going to appear just like that in a big block of text anyway on your profile overview. And actually what D Daniel does is exactly what I recommend. What I recommend is that you do something like this with uh, the top of it is going to be a highlight reel of two to four elements with emojis. You know, it looks very good with the emojis that separate all of these uh, elements. These are going to be like your big uh, things that establish your credibility. And you're going to have two to four of them, depending on how much you, you, you can show. Uh, for example, like if you look at the top, again, a Tinder has four, like top rated plus, 600K plus earned, Google certified, 100,000 plus happy clients. Those are all like big indicators of trust and credibility. And that really makes your profile attractive and makes people want to click on it. If you, you know, most of you don't have the level of success that Tinder has. And honestly, like uh, I have not earned 600,000 on Upwork either. So I can't put that. But what we can do is that we can put other things that make us uh, appear better than most other people. For example, uh, what I can say is that uh, I have built the website of one of the biggest sports companies in uh, Canada. I can say things like, uh, well, maybe I can't say that, but many of you can say that you have a, you're a graduate from uh, X college, or you can say that you've worked in the field for uh, five plus years or different things like that, uh, and that maybe you've worked on uh, 250 projects. So you can say something like 250 uh, plus plus happy clients, like uh, you, you can find different things that make you, uh, that, 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 you know, make you look competent, trustworthy. And if you're just starting out, you don't have to use it. But if you can, that's a great uh, thing that, that to use. And if you don't know how to write the rest of your profile bio, like what, all you got to do is just use uh, the search bar at the top here, like I did type web developer uh, in talent, like you don't want to find projects or a job right now. Uh, maybe later, but for now, you, we want to use uh, talent search and you enter web developer, you uh, enter that, and then uh, you use the, navi the the sidebar here of the, of the site at the left that has a lot of advanced search uh, options, and you filter your search to make sure you only keep people with at least $50 an hour who have earned at least 10K and who have billed uh, uh, at least 100 hours in the last six months. That's my favorite search to find uh, successful freelancers. You can easily find that for yourself, and what you do is that you open the profiles of many of these freelancers and you look at what they put in your in their profile bio. You can do this for the rest of their profiles, actually. But um, for now, for the bio, all you got to do is, you know, you look at what they put and uh, you try to find a uh, different, uh, a certain uh, structure for a bio that you feel you can do with your level of experience and what you have in terms of assets that you can, like, um, 
uh, of qualities that you can put on there. So, uh, for example, maybe uh, you find that David's profile, uh, his bio looks great and you'd like to do something like this. Um, but the problem is that, for example, maybe he says he has five plus years of programming. Well, maybe you only have one, write one, or uh, maybe write something else instead of that and uh, you just use it as a base. And what you can do is mix and match different uh, best parts of these profiles that you really like and make something good for yourself. It's much easier to find uh, good ideas when you're looking at the profiles of successful people than just trying to come up with good ideas for yourself. So that's my uh, best advice for building bios and the rest of your profiles. Uh, if you go a, a little bit uh, more at the bottom of a profile, you're going to also see that uh, there is this skills section. When you're building your profile, make sure that you use as many skills as you can, put in as many skills as you can, because that's going to help you appear higher in search results, get more recommended to clients on Upwork, and uh, get your proposals to appear higher. We're going to talk about proposals later, but basically when you apply to a job, the more the algorithm find you relevant to the job, the higher your proposal appears, the higher your offer to be hired appears. So uh, if your pro profile is more optimized, you will appear higher than other people. So you increase the chance that you get um, the job. So I recommend using as many skills as you can. You still want to use skills that are relevant to you that you can really uh, offer. Like don't you don't put uh, a PHP if you can't do PHP. HP, but you know, if you can do PHP, put PHP and put all the other things that you can uh, do in there to maximize your chances of getting the job. So yeah, those are my biggest tips for um, uh, profile creation. Once you are done with your profile optimization, what you want to do is that you want to start looking for jobs. What you do is you, you see at the top left of your screen, there is find work. You click on the drop down menu. There, here's there's find work. So click on that. So it's going to take you to this page. So what you do is you want to try to find jobs that you feel like you can accomplish. And you also want to make sure that ideally not too many people have um, applied to these jobs yet. And you ideally want to uh, be uh, applying within 24 hours after they uh, have been posted. It's not necessary. It's just that increases your chance of getting hired by quite a high percentage. So uh, I, I, it really makes it easier for yourself if you build the habit of opening up work at least once per day to check it out. Like I'm not saying like break your work life, life balance, but uh, what I like to do is like I like to do something like just playing video games and you know when when you are in the natural break in your game or you know watch tv shows you know after every episode you can go check up work if a new job came out or after game of league of legends or two games of league of legends you can maybe open up work and see if a new job came out like don't break your work life at balance don't spend all day just looking at up work but you know there's natural breaks in your schedule and maybe you can just spend two minutes after all these natural breaks maybe at the bathroom when you go to the bathroom just check up work and hey maybe there's a cool job that just came out try to apply to it fast um, because when you apply fast it really increases the chance that you get hired because maybe the person who put that job there is uh, still on the platform and maybe they're going to hire you right now and uh, if you send a good proposal quickly so yeah uh, that's uh, one of the best uh, advice I have if you want to find jobs easily especially when you're starting out but you know it, it, even if you don't uh, apply uh, right now, you can still have a lot of success on Upwork. So uh, one of the things I want to talk about before I, I, I show you the process of sending a proposal and applying to a job is that there's two ways to uh, get started on Upwork to find jobs. There is basically the option of uh, sending proposals and the, there's also the option of using Project Catalog that you can find uh, here at Find Work in My Project Dashboard. Uh, but uh, the problem with web development is that... Um, Project Catalog, instead of seeing clients who offer jobs and offering your services to them, it's basically the opposite. It's you build sales pages that clients can see and can decide to hire you and come to you without you having to go to them. Uh, it can be fun uh, and can feel better for a lot of freelancers who don't want to go to clients and don't want to pursue jobs and wants clients to come to them. However, the problem with that is that as a web developer, the market for uh, Project Catalog is very bad. 
the problem is that prices are very low and it's very hard to um, find jobs with Project Catalog as a web developer. So I would avoid it. Uh, you're going to make probably a lot more money if you use proposals. And the thing is, you want to get clients to come to you instead of you going to them. But this is a, a thing that happens naturally. Even if you don't use Project Catalog, even if you don't make these sales pages, clients end up going to, to you anyway because as you get more jobs and more five-star reviews Upwork starts recommending you to different clients and clients find your profile and you appear, you, you appear in search results when clients create job posting Upwork is like hey uh, you, you should invite this freelancer here and you know uh, you're going to re get recommended eventually anyway and most of the best jobs for web developers there's a ton of jobs in web development that are invite only there are jobs that basically clients don't want you to be able to find them and they just invite the freelancers that they want to invite that look cool and Upwork recommends you to them and uh, the, the most hyping jobs are typically there like most big of the biggest companies that pay the most uh, use only invite only and so once you start um, getting a lot of success on Upwork getting a lot of your first jobs and getting a lot of good reviews um, you start getting recommended and that's when you start being invited to some of these jobs and so just be patient. Like if you want clients to come to you instead of them, uh, you don't have to use Project Catalog and force yourself to do work and get paid not a lot of money. You can get paid a lot of money by uh, sending proposals and eventually you're going to get invited to more jobs and that's when you're, you're going to find out that these jobs tend to pay even more money. So yeah. So the way you use um, your uh, proposals, how, how you send uh, proposals is very simple. Uh, once you go to find work and you click either on uh, most recent or best matches or whatever you, you wanna check out, I'd say most recent is best if you're the type of person who uh, is on Upwork almost every day. And let's say uh, this job maybe is interesting, uh, content strategist for Instagram shorts and YouTube videos, maybe for you, you know, that that's not a web development job, but let's say it was a web development job and it was a job you wanted to do and you look at all the requirements and you're like, yeah, I can provide that. I want to do that. That's awesome. First thing you want to check is about the client. Make sure their payment method is verified and ideally, um, ideally, well, I can't see that. We used to be able to see the client's profile uh, and we could see like how many people they have uh, hired. Oh, yeah, we can see that here. So um, here it says two jobs posted, 0% higher, uh, three open jobs. Be very careful when you have 0% higher rate. Uh, you want clients who have at least hired one person in the past because the chance that they are scammers uh, is much lower. So I personally just ignore all clients who have never hired someone in the past. Um, you get it. Avoiding uh, avoiding scammers is pretty easy on Upwork. All you got to do is make sure that when they tell you, hey, give me your email address or uh, uh, talk to me on Telegram and they talk try to talk to you outside of Upwork, like you just say no, like all, all of them, they want to get you outside of Upwork and talk with you outside of Upwork and it's very easy to, to avoid. And sometimes like clients tell you that you should send them money. It's always a scam. You never have to send money to clients for any circumstance, under any circumstance, under any circumstance on Upwork, uh, but you know you 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 get a lot more. Um you get a lot, a lot less scammers uh, if you just uh, avoid clients with 0% higher rate. And also you avoid clients who go on Upwork and uh, end up hiring no one because many companies just open Upwork, create job postings and decide, oh, actually, maybe I don't want to use Upwork. So they, all the people who apply to these jobs are just wasting their time. So yeah, uh, I would try to find a job where the client has already hired at least one person. So yeah, here you have a client, for example, payment verified and has spent at least $3,000. So maybe that's a better uh, client that you could get. Once you find that you want to work with a client and they look um, um, trustworthy and they spent a little bit of money. So what you do is that you click at the green button at the top right that says apply now. It's going to take you to this page that uh, is going to be the page where you send your proposal. It's a very simple uh, process. Um, what it's going to tell you here is it requires nine connects. So connects are basically a currency that you use on Upwork. You need to pay connects to um, 
apply to jobs, but you do get a certain amount of connects for free every month. So Upwork can be used for free, but typically uh, it's probably going to take you at least $10 a month to get the amount of connects that you really need to apply to all the jobs you want if you want to do this for full time. So be ready to spend $10 or $15 a month to uh, get all the jobs you want. I don't think that's a big amount. A lot of people are frustrated by this, but yeah, it's, it's just 10, 15 bucks. Who cares? So um, yeah, so that's how you, um, that's how connects work and that's what connects are and that's what this section here means. So here you get a uh, what you, you get again a description of what the job is about. So at the end you start uh, offering your how much money you want to get for this project. So um, this client here has decided that he only wants um, you to be paid either by for the whole project or by milestone. It means that they want you to give them a fixed price for how much it's gonna cost. A lot of other clients are gonna give you the option as well to just uh, give them an hourly rate and they're gonna pay you whatever amount of hours it takes. But this client only wants uh, either by milestone or by, my, by project um, uh, rates. So what you do is basically you can, you estimate how many hours it's going to take you and you estimate like what hourly rate you want and you just give them uh, the amount you calculate that and maybe like it's going to be oh maybe it's $1200 for this uh, web page or whatever uh, project it is and then you uh, give them an estimate of when uh, you want the project to be done like give yourself a few weeks of uh, of um, of a uh, a, you know, a few weeks extra to make sure that uh, even if you don't finish it by that time, you're not going to be in, in trouble. And then, you know, you, you describe the name of the milestone or, you know, if you want to do it by milestones, basically like milestones are part of the project. So maybe you could say, hey, I'm going to finish uh, the initial design by X date and it's cost that amount. And then I'm going to finish maybe uh, the building of the, 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 the site by X date. And then I'm going to do a basic cybersecurity um, increase or whatever you offer and uh, by X date is going to be finished and here's the amount it's going to cost you. So that's how milestone work basically. But by project is just, hey, for the whole project, I want uh, maybe like uh, $3,000 or whatever you're going to charge. And then um, you enter the duration for the whole project. Earlier, we were talking about milestone. So, you know, it was asking us to like the duration for each milestone. But if you do it by project, you just enter the duration of the whole project here. And then cover letter. Cover letter is the most important part of your proposal. Uh, it is a bit of a science to write a good cover letter. Uh, fortunately, I made a step-by-step -step guide that you can follow the, to build high-impact proposal cover letters that stand out. Uh, it would take me a long time to just um, talk about it with you. I actually made a full course on just how to write good proposals. But uh, just getting my free step-by-step -step guide uh, should be enough for you to get started and be able to make good proposals pretty quickly. If you want to see that guide, there's going to be a link in the description where you can go and download it for free. So uh, go check that out, go download that and use my step-by-step -step process for building good uh, cover letters. It's going to be, it's probably going to make you so much more, uh, uh, so much better cover letters. And if you just try to build something from scratch for yourself without any structure, and uh, the better your cover letter is, the more, uh, the higher the percentage of the jobs you apply to decide to hire you. And that also means it's going to cost you less in connects because um, you're going to have to apply to less jobs to, to get your, uh, all the jobs you need. And uh, if, it also means that it's going to take you less time to get all the jobs you need because the time you spend looking for jobs is not time that gets paid. So yeah, it's all a bunch of benefits. So yeah, go download this for free in the description. That's how, oh uh, yeah, at the end you have to uh, click submit proposal and uh, you can uh, put some pro profile highlights here if you have any uh, certificates or a portfolio uh, project. You uh, can choose, the, the reason you, you, you can choose here is that uh, Upwork knows that some projects are more relevant to some jobs and some certifications are more interesting to some jobs. So it lets you choose uh, the best one for that project to make yourself uh, look even better for that client uh, as, be as good as possible. So yeah, you can choose uh, up to four if you have completed your profile and you have them. So once you're done, submit proposal and then your proposal is sent. 
I recommend you don't just wait and uh, see what happens because many times you send a proposal, it can be a good proposal, but maybe the client is not going to hire you. So maybe you're not going to get a response. It's annoying, but uh, the best way to succeed on Upwork is to not wait on your ass to get success and actually send a lot more proposals. And if you send a bunch of proposals per week, maybe at least five per week. Like uh, it's just a question of time before uh, you become successful. But if you just send one or two and wait a couple of weeks to get an answer, there's a good chance you're not going to get a lot of responses and not a lot of jobs. So be more proactive and just uh, send a lot more proposals and just one or two and wait. Like send at least five per week. I recommend probably more like 10 or 20. Uh, but you know, that can be time consuming. So uh, yeah, just do whatever you feel comfortable with. But yeah. That's how you find work as a web developer on Upwork. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, if you have any questions about this or about anything, ask me in the comments. And with that, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in my next videos. Take care.